party people, my name is DJ Cassidy, and I'm bringing you past the mic live at Radio City Music Hall in New York City, Friday, July 21st, a one night only event featuring Big Daddy Kane, Dougie Fresh, Rock Kim, and Slick Rick, with Black Sheep, Brand Nubian, CL Smooth, Dana Dane, Do It All of Lords of the Underground, EPMD, Fushnikins, Grandmaster Melly Mel and Scorpio, Kid and Play, Cool Mo D, Curtis Blow, MC Search, MC Shan, Milk D of Audio 2, Moni Love, Nice and Smooth, Onyx, Roxanne Chante, Special Ed, The Sugar Hill Gang, Tretch of Naughty by Nature, and Special Surprise Guests. DJ Cassidy's Pass the Mic Live at Radio City Music Hall, July 21st. Brought to you by the Black Promoters Collective, on sale at Ticketmaster. 25 hip-hop legends on one stage on one night. A celebration of hip-hop's 50th birthday in New York, for New York, by New York. DJ Cassidy's Pass the Mic Live at Radio City, July 21st, on Ticketmaster now. Hey, everybody. We gonna get this started early. I forgot tonight. Tonight is the NBA Finals, man. I'm not gonna miss... I'm not gonna miss... NBA Finals. Hell no. So, what up, Urban? A lot of people's checking in, but I'm not going to be on here past 8:45. <laughs> so I want you to understand that y'all can check me out on Spotify.com. That's where I do my podcast at. You can check me out on Rumble.com. You can check me out on YouTube.com. You can ask for Van Silk. Or you can go and search Van Silk. Not in my house with Van Silk. Now, I haven't been on here in a minute. Let me see. We'll keep it short if I bring you in. But we definitely going to talk about hip-hop events and what's going on. And I didn't get to my dialogue yet. But I will get into it because uh, I want people to please do understand you are at your own fault for a lot of things that are happening right now Um, I'm drinking some green juice I have to drink juice again I have to go back for another I took a CAT scan I have to do a PET scan and a colonoscopy. I can't even pronounce it now. Colonoscopy. Colonoscopy, and I have to do a PET scan next week because they've seen some spots. And uh, I have to go back. Hope that they don't find anything what they've seen. So, uh, if you ain't ever been on Instagram before and trying to join live, I think you have to actually be following. Had that problem with Grand with the Theodore some months ago. Maybe not. Irvin. Oh, man. He turned this around your, again. You got to flip the camera around, brother. What's up, brother? How you doing? Pretty good. Good, Van. How you doing, man? I'm okay. I'm okay. Good. I just want to let you know, we're going to keep it short with everybody that I bring on, but we're sitting here talking with the world-famous hip-hop photographer and photographer, Urban Patton, who's been shooting hip-hop for over 35 years. He's been shooting photos. I just want to label him as a hip-hop photographer. He's a photographer. And um, he, he, he does his events during the summer. And like I said earlier today, we need to support people who are doing events, who take out their time to do events and give out awards. Because I've seen so many people post in Yankee Stadium. Live Nation don't need you to support. They don't need you to promote that. We need you to support and, and, and have that same energy. When people like Irvin and other people in Sal are giving events, even if you're not on events, what do you feel about that, Irvin? I feel the same way, Van, because now we we help in Live Nation with free advertising, and like, like you said, are they are they caring about us really? 
So that's one of the things I don't do with big corporations like that. I would never um, give them free advertising posts in their I stuff. Mean, it's, it's nothing against it, but I'm just saying, I've seen over 100 different people off the Facebook community that we associate with. Everybody's posting it. You're not even part of the show. But, so, but, but I ain't see a lot of people post Sparky D. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't see a lot of... Okay, I seen the goose that's on the Charlie Mack show June seventeenth. I seen them post because they they got promoted. But there's so many other things that's going on. I don't see nobody super posting it. I can see like people posting Char Rock Day because you know why? Because they wasn't part of it. So if I ain't part of it, I ain't gonna promote it. But you ain't part of Yankee Stadium. You think the people at Yankee Stadium and Live Nation are gonna say, "Oh wow, so and so posted. We are gonna give them a free ticket?" Hell no, it ain't happening. No. Like that. no. <laughs> They don't get it. And we had four years when I kept preaching and preaching before COVID, let's get together and put out, do our own thing. Because the day's going to come, and the day has come where not everybody wants to sit back. Well, you know, they should have so and so on here. And they should have what? Okay, you know what the problem is? Mm. All the people. You mentioned they can't even sell out a PAL club. <laughs> they can't even fill a park jam for free. Exactly. Exactly. You give a free park jam and food, and, and, and it's free. <laughs> people, people want, people want, to, people want to come out and see people that they haven't seen. They want to get something. If you're gonna give a free park jam and say you're gonna have new addition in the park, they, it's gonna be jam back. Mm -hmm. It's great when you do things and, and get people awards and stuff, but I said earlier today, how hard was it for the first generations in the Pioneer Legends to get together twice a month? You'll get a venue. You'll put your money together. This week, we got Divine Sound. We're going to take care of them. Everybody paid to get in and didn't know, oh, I'm so-and-so. Well, I used to be down on this flyer back in 1922 and all this crap. Then the, ne the next two weeks, you put Cold Crush on. Next two weeks, you put another group on. Next two weeks, you put three or four solos on that the little bill and everybody is a, re a recycling and regeneration of support. But you know what, Van? Half of the main problems, as you know, as well as I do, um, egos. Every got, everybody got e big ass egos. I ego after 40 years and no hit. <laughs> Well, that's something I like for half of them to explain. What's up, Be More? We got Be More in the house. That's that's the up and coming. That this lady is no joke. I can vouch for her. Be More is no joke. But um, I don't know, Van. Ego has always been in the way. Ego has always caused a lot of disruption in the groups and. Look, look at uh, a lot of these groups today. Where they at now? They can't even. Stand each other. And no, I like to shout out DJ Lady Love, who's out in Seattle, Washington, working, getting more work than when she was here on the East Coast. She's I always stood up for Lady Love because after the Mercedes Lady with with, with, with uh, Deborah and Flame and um, you know, DJ Lady Love was just right there. She was right always, there. Always been. And you, you know. And she and, and, and I had to see a post one day. She said, "Man, I, I couldn't get the respect when I was here. I get more love out in Seattle." And I think uh, I know Shaw Rockingham was going out there to the pop to the pop up. Uh, pop, what were they the places? Because they've been in contact with me mm -hmm. because they had some stuff in mind that they had to send back to me. But the whole point I'm trying to say is, that LL Cool J got Rock the Bell show August fifth. You know. Charlie Mack is doing the show June seventeenth. He got a lot of the pioneers and legends going out to Atlantic City. Somebody said, "But well, he could have did it in the Bronx. Why the fuck would he want to do that?" Mm -mm. You no, took somebody from about. Philly that's bringing everybody to Philly, and the whole thing about it is he's not able to pay everybody a full rate because you got fifty acts. Yeah, but you know that's the best celebration that a lot of first and second generation is going to get. That that's going to be there. Now, I know some groups that ain't there because of their scheduling or whatever, whatever. But when I go and look at this, the headline 
This is Curtis Blow, Melly Melly Scorpio, and the Sugar Hill Gang. Now, why? No, they headlining over a lot of other people. Yankee Stadium is one thing. Atlantic City, 6,500 seats is one. 60,000 is enough. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, and look who's doing it. Not us. Look well, who's doing it. It's not it's, us. It, well, you know what the problem is? It's mass appeal. Major League Baseball and, and, and Live Nation. Okay? Now, there's two things that could have happened. This or nothing. Now, there's going to be a lot of block events, uh, events around the stadium going on because... I'm not supposed to say, but I do have an event going on that day mm -hmm. within the, I can't say nothing else, but the one I've been working on, but people got to understand something. And there's going to be more names added to the Yankee Stadium show. I just can't disclose it. But let's understand, you can't jack fill a lineup with a bunch of people and respectfully, Pioneer the Legends, that the average person that's going to buy a ticket to this event is going to be between 20 and 35. That don't, they don't know. Now, they mm -hmm. do a nice, great video honoring some of the True. Pioneers on the big screen. That's great. You don't have to be on the stage. You don't need to have a mic. That's the problem. What you need a mic for? Sit your ass down. When they did the, was it the Grammys or whoever had everybody's pictures on the Bob TV one? Great. If you're a champion, it's so beat, everybody can't can't please everybody. That's why I don't care. You can't please everybody. Well, that's part of the problem too, Van. We all got stage itis where we have to be seen up there on the stage. You know? <sighs> that's our problem. You're not performing, but you gotta be up there on the stage. That's one thing I hate. And at my event, you don't have that. If you know one, you staying away. Just the artist. You know what? a lot of the other groups and the other barrels won because every time something go down with it, the Bronx MCs or the, some of the old, oh, oh, they got to get on the mic. They just <laughs> got to get on the mic. Mm -hmm. It's like, dude, chill, relax. And, 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 and it gets to be like, what are you going to do different than you done did three weeks ago? And then the whole point is the reason why you can't get booked in New York or whatever. Yo, I can see the dude in a in a club in front of fifteen people. <laughs> mm. He was just in the park the other day on the mic doing a song. I don't know. Exactly. They don't get it. And see, a lot of people keep missing the, the keep missing the rewrite of the history because a lot of y'all helping rewrite it. It's the 49th anniversary of hip-hop. Legally, it's still the 49th anniversary. Exactly. We know the, that. The 50th anniversary don't hit until August 11th. Until next year, August 11th is still going to be 50. My birthday is November 27th. I was 64 November 27th, 2022. When the first January turned, I was still 64. I ain't going to turn 65 until November. Why disrespect the birth of hip-hop? Now, I can understand the Grammys, TV One, BT Award, that have TV schedules. Okay, that's different. I can understand people who've been doing things for more than just for five, six, seven, eight years, like Sal just did his event. Okay, mm -hmm. he's entitled to that. I, I can understand that. But you just got a lot of people just coming out of the way, oh, the 50th anniversary of this, and the 50th anniversary of that. And the first day I can ask them, like, yo, who's cool hurt? They can't tell you. Mm -hmm. A lot is uh, unofficial, but like I told you the other day, you was one of the only one that brought it out to pass publicly that it's not really the 50th. It's 49. Yeah. You let the cat out of the bag. Only you. Because I, because I, I respect what everybody's doing. I can see if you're doing something in July, going into August, like past the mic with DJ Cassie July 21st. Okay? I can see things in June because of, because of venues. But when you start talking about it in January, damn! <laughs> January? When January 2024 turn around, it's still going to be 50. 
I can guarantee you, ain't gonna be nobody walking around talking, yo, it's the 51st anniversary. What are we gonna do now? Nothing, because y'all don't care. Well, I'm honestly, man, I'm waiting to see what's gonna happen after this year. Everybody's on the bandwagon. Let's we'll wait see. to see how long this lasts and what well, happens see, next. It's, that's why my celebration is from August 11th this year to August 11th to 2024, because that's the year. You know, you can get stopped by the police. I'm still 64. I'm not 65. My birthday's in November. Mm -hmm. Hip hop birthday's August 11th. But like I said, there are things that you have to excuse. The Grammys is in February. You know, the, the, those awards show, the, the, all that stuff is TV. I'm just talking mm -hmm. about the regular smoke. I've seen a bunch of stuff online. Oh, we got the 50th anniversary cookout in Alabama. Mm. Like, come on, man! It's like Martin Luther King Day. Y'all going through a gold chain on Martin Luther King with a gun, and y'all have a Martin Luther King J party. Like, it's just so disrespectful. Like, the vet that we have with Sean Rock and, and Melly Mel and Scorpio down in Virginia. You know, I actually mm. called the people out about being culture vultures, and they actually brought them down there, took care of them, and everything. But she wasn't a culture vulture. She just didn't know how to get in touch with people. You know. So, so what you got going on this summer? Summer, September 9th, Van, is going on again. Um, last summer, I took a little hit, but people still came for um, my annual community uh, block party. It fell on the same day. Well, LL, Rock the Bell, fell on my day. But still, most of the artists came to my event. Then they left to go to Rock the Bell. Half didn't get in. They wish they didn't uh, leave my event because there was a whole lot of hectic stuff going on there. So this year, September 9th, which is everyone is uh, back from vacation from the Hamptons or whatever. So we're going to do it up again with a couple of good surprises. And, and, and it was so crazy. Um, I'm going to remind everybody, you know, this is uh, we're part of Hip Hop Guards and part of RapStation.com. And like I said, you can catch me on Rumble.com and not. Which for not in my house with Van Silk and on YouTube.com, and I am on Spotify. And I'm sitting here talking to Urban Patton, and we're talking about hip hop events and uh, the 50th anniversary of hip hop events. Did you go to Rock the Bell event last year? Did you go? I, I, no, I was doing my function. It fell okay. on the same day. Okay. Oh, that's right. It was. And I kept asking, why the hell are you doing it the same day? Uh, uh, why did Rock the Bell fall on my day? You understand? <laughs> I put it in my <laughs> permits earlier. But I wasn't going to go head up with LL at the Coliseum. I know everyone was going to go to Rock the Bell, but I still appreciate those that came through before they went there. And I was told, hey, I wish I had said that your stuff because, again, it wasn't what they thought it was going to be. Well, you know what, man? Again, when LL first did the first Rock the Bell Festival, everybody was posting it. And then you know, you know, I heard how everybody was just trying to get backstage. Like, you're not performing. What do you want to be back there for? Stay there. Right because, there. listen, there's certain levels in this game of who you are. <laughs> there's this level, there's mm -hmm. that level, and then this level, your ass just need to be in the audience. Okay? <laughs> Cause when you got to walk up to somebody and say, well, you know, I'm so and so, and I, and, and you know, my song go like this. No, you need to be in the audience. <laughs> you know, that's what makes me so sick. Cause that's like, if I got a concert with T Sweat, Johnny Gill, Tank, Joe, and Jimmy Wine, and I'm gonna get a call from the shot like, how oh, come we can't be on this show? Dude. Just because you're an RB, don't mean you can't be on the show. This is not your generation. That too. And a lot of people don't understand our generation. Hey, yo, by the time you, if you're trying to go out at 10 o'clock at night and you don't work all day, you know, by the time you take a shower, you sit back and sip on some green juice, <laughs> you just got dressed, 10 minutes later, you'll be like this. Oh yeah. You wake up you wake up at three in the morning. Oh shit, man, what damn. Come on, man. It happened. You don't, don't nobody wanna spend no money. They buy one drink and sip on that one drink all night. 
And the crazy part about this, the generation that buy tickets are 20 to 35. They spend the money. I can guarantee you Yankee Stadium is going to have 75% of Lil Wayne and Snoop Dogg fans. Man. And see, when you when you when you stand on that type of leverage, Lil Wayne got leverage because he can say, "Well, you know what? I'll bring Nicki Minaj out, but you can't put her name on the fly." Mm. So you got to understand those acts are million dollar acts. They're private jets. They don't fly commercial. Mm -hmm. So you look, look, I know what one DMC get approximately two fifty. Snoopy. Wayne, 750 to 1.5, depending on where Ice Cube is up there. It's now, done. Ice Cube alone. alone. It's over a million dollars. Yeah. If, 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 because I know they gave Live Nation a break. Then think about the next tier of acts. T.I., Common. You know, like you, you know, Lupe F Y'all scoring such a big, but I'm just saying, you know, Fat Joe ain't like he could, you know, he 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 a nice he price, bring, you know. He little bring his people. But what I'm trying to say is, respectfully, Sugar Hill Gang's on there, Cass, Muddy Mel Scorpio, Curtis Blow, Roxanne Shante, Tribute to Hurt and Cindy. It could be a few other th things added. We don't know. But let's let's understand this show starts at four doors, open four thirty, probably starts at five thirty, ten thirty, mm -hmm. eleven o'clock, day out. They don't play them. They don't play that. That's sort of like an updated summer jam at Yankee and, Stadium. And I can and I know the other three acts that's going to be there, and I can't even say their names. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we should be happy. Boy, you know, it's the 50th anniversary of hip hop, not the 50th anniversary of the Bronx. Because well, let's say. keep it 100. If we had to depend on the Bronx for 50 years of hip hop, we ain't been pumping no, no hits. Cardi B is the biggest thing that came out the Bronx since when? Mm. Since when? Mm. Since when? Since when? Since when? Since when? Since when? Since when? Okay, you got Fat Joe and Mar, but he's not bigger than her. So at the end of the day, if she's not on it, it's because of scheduling. Because I'm quite sure she would do it. She might she might be there. But my whole thing comes down to this here. We ain't had no big ass group. We didn't have no groups from our generation since the 80s. <laughs> since exactly. Since exactly. the <laughs> But people didn't I'm, I'm gonna tell you how whack we are in Bronx, my own brother. They only they it it, it took a council person to acknowledge Lily and and, and, and and Coco from SWV. They from the Bronx. For them to get their walk of fame. Bronx don't support them. Brooklyn support they people. Queens support they people. Brooklyn support they people. We we don't support. And I don't care if nobody well, I'm digging down on the Bronx because I'm like disappointed, man. We can't even put together a park for AJ or Cowboy. It should have been done years ago. Should have been done years Mama, ago. People talk to talk. They've been talking about Disco King Mario, and yet you want people to look at us like, yo, we only got our own shit together, but you want think people to come. And oh, we want to get these groups. These groups ain't half of me together. Yeah, yep. egos. Half of them together. Half of them is out of shape. And then you want to go on stage, and then you're gonna talk about how much money you need, and you can't even sell a hundred tickets. I feel. I'm glad you. I'm. I feel. If you feel your group is all that. Go and get Lehman College, book Lehman College, put promote your group, and make your all make all the money you want. Uh, they they can't put in the legwork too, man. Listen, listen. 
You want somebody else to give you the money and lose their money on you, but you won't bank on If you don't bank on your own self, who going to bank on you? Like I said, four years ago, five years ago, I told a lot of people, so everybody's on here, yo, yo, get your website. 50th anniversary is coming up. You need to have your own platform. Facebook is not your platform. You need to have where you can go. People can buy your T-shirts. People can go on your page. Boom, boom, boom. It's nobody's did it. Too late now. The shit them sell, and the next time they're gonna be a 50th anniversary celebration, it's gonna be your great grandkids going because we won't be here. <laughs> Shout out to Shaki Shay. She's on. She she's listening. She's out here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Shaki, that that's the lady. Van, my wife said you sound like you need some oxtail, dude. I can't eat no meat, brother. I'm sorry. Uh, she's uh, she's disappointed. So so can she? She hasn't. But uh, I I don't eat oxtail, but I got you for something else. Yeah, but you know, brother, with all going on again with this cancer, I just gotta stay away from red meat, man. You know, I, I really got do. You. I just want to say, listen, there's going to be a lot of things going on. My man Chucky Chuck got his event coming up in oh, Springfield. Yeah. Springfield. I'll be up there for Chucky Chuck's event. I'm coming up. Depending on what the doctors say on the 22nd when I go back, because I don't, I don't know what's going to be my outcome now. But I pray that everything's going to be okay. I like to give a shout out to um, the Bronx for giving shout out Rock and the Cold Catch brother the key to the Bronx. Um, I seen Ralph Carter was out hanging out. Oh yeah, you know, shout out Rock today. Oh, oh, she loved it. It's cool. Rocky doing his event this year. I heard he's not doing it at all. Cancel till next year. See, it's 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 funny. He started something, and what would it take for like some of the groups like yo? Let me let me throw you more hundred dollars towards what you gotta do for the stage and all this thing here. Same thing with Shaw Rock, man. She come out her pocket, okay? It's like, but everybody wanna cut the sheet, and I'm and she told me it was food and all that. Now, what is it? Everybody in the park is saying, listen, let me give, let me put ten dollars towards this here. Boom, 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 boom. Black people just want to come, eat, and run, and then probably you probably have some people that taking the plate. <laughs> yeah, take out. She had, she had, she fed the people out there. I need to give a shout out to my man who I've been talking to, Star, from the Star Report, from Star and Buckwild. Had a good conversation with my brother Star, but I want people to please do understand. Don't get the misconception of of. of Yankee Stadium events. Don't get the misconception of what LL is doing with Rock the Bells because it's funny. They just had this show with Ice T and them out in Bushwick. Was the Bushwick thing with Ralph McDaniel? Yeah, and I in Bush, Brooklyn. Right. So, my thing is, it don't matter what stage you was on, get on some kind of stage. But it's always the one that's complaining that don't get booked. The last time y'all been booked, there wasn't even social media. There wasn't even cell phones. There was, was no there was no laptops. It was so there was no internet. So much going on last Saturday, man. Uh also Biggie Biggie's block party Biggie in Brooklyn. Block party. You had the Roost Picnic out in Philly. You had the Bushwick Avenue. Joy, what's the two kids that had that song? I like that song. Um, those some kids from Brooklyn that came on stage, man. Um, I miss them. I miss that. Dang. But the whole thing I'm trying to say was so much going on that it was spread it out. You know what I'm saying? And everything that got going in the New York with the Army skies, I don't know if the skies have cleared up yet. Well, it ra it's raining out here today now, so it's kind of cleared up. Right. But you know, it's it's always the one complaining that's not that haven't did. Listen, I love all my brothers and sisters from the culture of hip hop. But the ones that are complaining, 
You ain't had a record since 1983. You're not getting booked nowhere. But you expect the Yankee Stadium, well, we're going to honor somebody that nobody remember. Hmm. Egos. Public enemy is an I asked Chuck D. He said they wasn't even asked. But Chuck wow. D them probably wouldn't have done anyway because they don't want to do shows no more. You know, it takes a lot when you gotta move public enemy around. Chuck is yeah. here, Chuck is here. You know, it takes a lot. But again, you just gotta look at it. When they did Watch Stacks in California that had Rufus Thomas and all those groups, and everybody wasn't from California. <laughs> you know when you know we got to get off. Oh, it's for the Bronx, man. They should have all the Bronx right. Really, Marshall, we'll go do it. We'll sit back and watch. Y'all need to get together and put together your own park jam and get groups to come out. Nobody wants to do it. That, that was part of the dream always, Van. If these people put aside some of their egos and stuff. They can get a lot going, but again, everybody wants to call the big shots. Everybody but, wants to okay, be something else. So. I don't care who you are, old school pioneer legend. You're not doing no show of mine with trying to do a new song. That's just not happening. So if you're in the group, you better try to find as many members in your group to come on that stage. <laughs> if they still alive, they better be on there. Otherwise, I don't want you. I hate you. And this is how many minutes you're going to do. Three minutes? To four minutes. I don't need you up there yapping your gun. Well, you know, back in the day, you know, you, you know, I was this. You know. No, good to do your song. Get, get off the stage. Oh, the other thing I find recently, Van, if I hide you, why are you coming on stage with your boys, uh, doing a song which nobody knows? I don't want your boys. I'm hiring you. You understand? And that's what's going on now, too, which killed the whole uh, event. You bringing your boys. Put him somewhere else. I hired you for you and your song. That's it. Those are the things we got to get tough on other people too, man. They want to hook their boys up. Their entourage. First of all, Fat Joe said something the other day. If you if you old and still trying to rap, go get a job. This is a young kids game. Now and. Are people going to realize that nobody want to hear nobody with gray hair trying to come out as a new artist? When you, unless you're going to build your own platform and build your own following, unless you got a sensational TikTok song that went viral, it ain't going to happen. I'm sorry to kill. I'm sorry to be the dream killer. The KRS one, the Dougie Fresh, the Slick Witch, the Sugar Hill Gang, the Melly Mel Furious Five, the Raw Bass, JJ Fad, you know, the Eric B, Eric Rock Kim, they're going to work. But eventually that's going to die out because that generation of them fans is dying off. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had a promoter who told me he wants some old school group for a show. I said, I got the Sugar Hill Gang. He, oh, that's a little too old for my audience. I said, How old your audience? 2045 and 50. How's that old? He's lost. lost. He no, doesn't know. The point was, the promoters call up and they want, example, I know what Dougie get. You want to give Dougie 10,000 less than what he get. Even though it was on the Thursday. Ain't happening. Even if it was on the Thursday, how you want to give the man 10,000 less than what he get? Ain't he happening. Took, he took 3,000 off. Ain't happening. But that's what I'm trying to say. Oh, here's another one. And this is why it pisses me off. I had a promoter in Alabama call me. No, Mississippi. I had to check homeboy temperature. And yo, I was in Mississippi. I know my man down there. He's a lawyer. And he named me the lawyer. I said, okay, you good money. Mm -hmm. He said, listen, Van, I want to do a 50th anniversary party. But I just want to have one Pioneer DJ. One. Okay. He said, all I can afford is this. Mm -hmm. Okay. I made, I gave him some names. I talked to Red. 
He said, Van, I got to get a little bit more. I said, Rev, respectfully, I mentioned your name. I'm going to call you because I don't want to come back and say, well, you know, I talked to Van two months ago. He's trying to book you. And, and, and I, you know, you don't get down like that. But then I called right. another DJ. I called another DJ who wasn't even in the conversation. I said, listen, man, I got 3500 for you to go to Mississippi. You can only play for 20 minutes. He just want to do something with a Pioneer DJ. This month. Uh, gonna tell me, well, let me, let me let me let me get with my team, and I'll call you back in a couple of days, huh? He's a fool. You tell that DJ I said he's a fool. <laughs> you gonna get with your team? First of all, they didn't ask for you. I brought you up. See, so that's why when I call certain people, I can get an answer within an hour or two. Let me look at my schedule. I'll get right back to you. Yeah. You know, and see, when you ask, and, and, and respectfully, I don't care. Everybody's entitled to charge what you want to charge. Is that who's going to pay for it? What up, Miss Swiss? Let me see who else has joined us. It's 8 30. I got 15 more minutes. Okay. Um, uh, I got, I got, I got Arby Swiss. Is Arby Swiss going to join in? Sedan's hook up, Sedan's people that be out with uh, Chucky Chuck. What up, Miss Swiss? Hi, how are you? How you doing? I got Urban Patton on the phone. How you Hi. Doing? Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. Good. Yeah, so we was talking tonight. Uh, oh, what I do want to say to people, none of my house is the brand with Van Silk, but everything hip-hop now is going to be the articles of hip-hop. Okay. I'm branching that off, and like I said, I'm on Rumble, I'm on YouTube, and I'm on Spotify for podcasts. So I, when I do for YouTube and Rumble, then I got to do a whole nother segment for Spotify. Then I got to do another segment for this. The same thing, but I got to do it because it's audio and video. But we was talking about Yankee Stadium and the 50th anniversary event. What is your perception, and what do you think about what's going on? And how do you feel? As a, Just put, play yourself as an outsider. Me? Yeah. I think it's, it's great. You know, it's going to draw, draw a crowd, not just uh, the younger generation, but our generation, too. Yeah, they remember. <laughs> yeah, because, because, you know, I was talking to somebody where nobody want to hear Little Wayne. Oh, no, you out of your damn mind. Little, when the last time Little Wayne played New York? When the last time Snoop's been on the big stage in New York? Them two alone will sell 40,000 tickets. Were they at Rock the Bells Festival last year? I don't think nope. so, no. You got one, one DMC, who's just going to be their last show. You got Ice Cube. You got Snoop. You got Lil Wayne. With the possibility of Snoop could bring out whoever Snoop want to bring with him, special guest. Whoever Little Wayne want to bring with him, special guest that we don't know, Nicki Minaj, Drake, do we know? Hello? <laughs> so I, I, I think it's a great thing, especially with the Major League Baseball, especially with them really pushing this. And there's going to be a lot of street festivals, um, events going on during the day for free also. Yeah. I can't name all of them, but I'm gonna tell you I, I'm involved with one where I'm gonna have about 15 acts performing. That's not gonna be in Yankee Stadium, but at least you get to be part of something that day because it's it's gonna be like going to Woodstock that day. And a lot of people that are artists should be happy that they just allow to witness this. Yeah. Because if I was salt and pepper, I think I would be upset. Because they are. You you know, but you can't be on everything. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff going on Facebook about, you know, they should honor the pioneers and they should do this. Well, listen, Live Nation is good at what they do. I'm quite sure there's somebody in there talking to them like, yo, we need we need to have like a video presentation honoring the pioneers and legends of hip hop. You don't have to actually perform as long as you get acknowledged some way along the line. It's like 
why we always have to want somebody else to do something when we can do it ourselves? There you go. You don't have to be backstage. Be in the audience. Cause everybody gonna do the same thing. You gonna have your phone up. <laughs> right. I mean, you're still being a part of it. You're part of that history. You can say I was there. I mean, MC Hammer had one of the biggest records in hip hop. How do you think he fit? Or Vanilla Ice. Let's be realistic about this. Yeah, that's hip hop. What's going to? But it's it's about who's been working, who's going to marginalize and sell the tickets. What is the demographics that's going to bring those tickets in this place? Mm. You're talking sixty thousand seats. Ain't no black act besides James Brown in the old Yankee Stadium filled that up. And I, don't, I don't know if it was sold out then. I think it was 40,000 seats back then when he did that show, 1969. That's only the show, man. What about the marketing, T-shirts, hats, you know? Well, you know the bootleggers, all the bootleggers in New York, they're going to get those shirts, man. Get your money. They, yeah, right outside the stadium, right around well, the corner. If you, if you can get past the ticket perimeter, if you ain't got tickets to get to certain things, you may not be able to get close to the stadium. Mm -hmm. They don't treat this like a triple. They don't treat this like the World Series. They, they don't treat this like this is the president of the United States of America inside there because you talking about Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. Alone. You talking about the stick up kids. You talking about the wild kids. You talking about the Caucasian fans that's going to be coming in. That love Little Wayne that loves Snoop, that like Run DMC, young, old, whatever, that might want to see the Sugar Hill Gang or Curtis Blow or T.I. or whoever, that's going to be added. I, the, the other three names are going to be added. It's a game. It's like a game. I can't even mention the name. But what I'm trying to say is just imagine the perimeter of the Bronx. It's gonna be crazy. When they got Yankee Stadium in a baseball game, you already know how they got stuff corralled off. You talking about a hip hop event that people from around the world's probably gonna to come to? That people ain't never been yeah. to the Bronx, walking, <laughs> looking up, and next thing you know, you done got your chain of phone snatched before you even get ten blocks from Yankee Stadium? Nah, they're gonna to have to really from 139th Street to 161st Street and up. They're gonna to have to really come on, man. It's been working about security wise, definitely. Yep. yep. I mean, you got remember this ain't Master Square Garden, Midtown Manhattan. You talking about the Bronx, the Harlem is right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, uh, listen, I'm happy that it's happening. I want people to stop complaining. Ticket starts at fifty dollars. Go get your ticket. Stop trying to act like. Well, you know, if I don't get a backstage pass, I ain't coming. Well, stay your black ass home. Nobody wants you to. Some of who are you to get a ticket? They'll be there. They still will be there just no, to say they were there. I ain't gonna say the person. Who are you to get a ticket? What uh, What have you done in hip hop since nineteen eighty three for you to get a ticket? Oh, oh, you mean your plus one wants a plus one also? <laughs> you know how it is. Somebody said. I can't believe they said this. Well, they don't at least invite me. I ain't coming. So you gonna mean to tell me out of all the rappers that got platinum and triple platinum and all this, your ass that ain't never had a hit record. Are you gonna be insulted? <laughs> you can watch it on YouTube or Facebook or whatever. Everybody be streaming. Yeah. But, right. But I want everybody to please remember, let's not let Yankee Stadium be let it be the jump off for what is going to go down for the 50th anniversary of hip hop. Because, like I said, you still got up until next year, August 11th, to still celebrate the 50th anniversary of hip hop. There's a lot of things that may the corporate entity may not do, but there's a lot of things that we can still do between this summer and next summer. Mm -hmm. So think about it. Think about having the biggest. Park hip hop jam 
like when we did Orchard Beach uh, two years ago, we had them in the different barrels of the Bronx. Maybe get with the mayor's office and we want to do this here. Boom. And, and we could do it. It don't have to be Yankee Stadium. It don't, definitely going to be Madison Square Garden. Because I can tell you, you. Tell you right now, it's, no matter what you do when it becomes talking about pain, you still need headliners. <laughs> and you know, to celebrate 50 years of hip hop is going to take more than one event. Even if it fills 60,000 seats, that's not enough time to celebrate. It's the just a big, it's just a one day half show. Century. It's a one day show. Me, if I was doing it, I would have made the three day event. I would have started off the first day honoring the Pioneers of the Legends performances. Groups that I know that can perform, look good, perform, got a record, boom. You get a three day ticket pass, boom, and you still have, you know, the Pioneers. Little legends, and that's the show you put the Big Daddy Kane, Dougie Fresh, Slick Rick, you know, Dirk, uh, 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 EPMD, you know, well, then that next day, you know, you get Wu Tang Clan, you know, The Locks, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, Remy Martin, Fat, whatever, and then that last day, you come with the Run DMC and a Snoop or them or whatever, or, you, or whoever, or you could just fit them over on another day. Like they did the, the mm -hmm. picnic, they had Usher, they had uh, 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 Usher replaced Diddy, they had uh, Lauryn Hill, you know, then they Come had the the you know, stuff like that. So that's what I would have did, three days. And then everybody, majority of people can be happy, but you still have people that won't be happy. Like it'll be a group that ain't never had a record, but you know, you know we, used be, we used to be dope back in the day, man. You know, oh, here we go with this dope, dope flyer MC. Ain't nobody know who you are. You can ride the trains. You can ride commercial flights, and nobody know who you are. Well, Van, and that's one of the things I go to when I see some of these cats in clubs. That yo, I used to be down with it, dude. If I, I didn't shoot you, that means you wasn't no one to me back then. And that's the main thing I tell them. How was you back then? I never seen you anyway. How was you with this group? I know everyone in the group. You wasn't a part of it, so don't play with me. And I'll tell him, if I didn't shoot you, <laughs> you wasn't no one then. This is my this is my motto. If you still gotta buy commercial flights, and if you can't walk down, if you, you can walk down the street and nobody know who you are, then you ain't a headline. A headliner can't get on a commercial flight. Matter of fact, a headline. I don't want to even get on the commercial flight. Mm -hmm. When you sit up here, and they're making these promoters pay this forty, fifty thousand dollars for these flights for these artists today. What is Fabio getting now? Three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Do you mm. know promoters? In, do you know promoters in Atlanta can make eight hundred thousand dollars in the club? My man was doing a party. One of my young, younger promoters in Atlanta. He's like, yo, man, I got one of the uh, amigos and I got Keisha Cole birthday. He's like, yo, man, this shit's the both of them like cost me a hundred thousand. No, no, no performance in there, just in the club. I said, a hundred thousand. He said, yeah, we get 30% of the bar. hundred thousand is costing for the both of them. Does to show up? He said, but a van, these young kids are spending. Twenty, thirty thousand dollars on bottles. He said the bar made eight hundred grand. Yeah. The door Could made be. another three hundred thousand. That's the difference between this generation and money and ours. Cause those tickets at Yankee Stadium starts at fifty dollars. I bet you those tickets down to the bar was fifteen hundred, two thousand. Mm. When you got kids paying seven thousand dollars for Beyonce tickets, <laughs> yeah. our generation don't get that. Tickets might be the most one hundred fifty. You got clubs in Atlanta charging people three hundred dollars to get in to see Glow Glorilla, and they pay it, and they turn around and buy ten bottles, another yeah. another ten thousand there. 
It's different generation, different time. And that's why when Yankee Stadium say, you know what, we're going to maximize our money. Who's mm -hmm. going to sell that many tickets that ain't never played in New York on a big stage? Little Wayne, Snoop, and Ice Cube. Ice and Cube. I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you Dr. Dre probably going to come out with Ice Cube. I can guarantee Dr. Dre probably going to come out with Snoop. But you can't right. put Dr. Dre name on it. It's too much money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't think Dre and Snoop ain't going to come out and do Dre Day, That's if you don't think Nicki Minaj and Drake going to come out with Lil Wayne, Mm -hmm. Shit, don't be surprised if Eminem pop up. Right. Anything's possible. We know that. In New York, anything's going to be possible. And we should all enjoy it. Yep. And that's all I got to say. I okay. hate to say this, people, with this conversation, I want everybody to please do understand I am with y'all in your arguments about what should have been what what should have been done or what could have been done or what the possibility that still can be done you have to excuse those clothes in the back but what i'm trying to say is i want our generation to sit here and please do understand you can't have too many indians you need, we need more indians and less chiefs we need to right, do right. this before who haven't done it before we don't need somebody to sit up here and say well you know it's about me and nobody else that's been the problem and and if y'all want to do something then let's sit down and then every group should donate their time to a park jam no no pay and let's just do it maybe if we can get everybody with the members to, to perform, I want the feelers for whether it's with whether whether it's with uh, uh, peso, peso. peso, whether it's with uh, OC My being a fourth team. member. I don't want two people. If we want the crash school, you're all alive. I open set down with C, then give me the and I want oh, I want and I want the crash crew. I don't want the crash. crash. I want the crash mm. crew. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 for those who ain't here spiritually i mean you know here but we can't help for those who are not here but right. this thing that could be done together in the medley form with kuroski jalil and and, and and uh doc ice the utfo who did fat boys tonight boom i mean it's so easy everybody want to get the bag bag of what <laughs> Would love to see that, that band. Would hey, I'm not gonna waste my time and listen, my, and listen, 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 listen. This is where I'm at with it. It's a conversation, and and I will reach out to certain people to get them committed. If we could do this, but the whole thing got become um, when everybody think like back in the day, like yo man, them niggas is whack. Why are you putting them on? And see, the first time you said. That to me is the first time you out. You can't please them all, though. You your, know that. No. Your Fred Sanford and Grady's is too old for that shit, man. I like that idea about a medley, especially if you got enough artists to do a medley in memory of those paths. But listen, you could take Doc Ice, Doc, and Jalil, and, and Kubrowski, and they could do a whole medley with the UTFO. Fat boys and get a beatbox, you know, and, and, and do it. I mean, you know what's going to happen? There's going to be somebody going to get together, get a Las Vegas review, and they're going to go out there and do all this, all the hip hop hits with and make it happen. And make mm -hmm. and I've been telling them for the longest, yo, we need to put together <laughs> some kind of hip hop review to take to Vegas, and we could just do basically all the, the the biggest songs. Most people do it in their show. You know, an honorary thing. It's like, listen, I watch everybody when it was 55, yo, man, trying to get this record deal. I watched them when they was 45, yo, man, trying to go to the studio. I watched them when they was 35, yo, man. 
what can I do? I watch you when they're 25, when they was popular, and they were shitting on everybody. Now you're 60, 65, going on 75, and you still out here trying to do a record. Listen, that's your dream. You should be writing books, building something for your grandkids and family. Just like I told Irving about all your photos. What did I, what did I tell you, Irving? Got to get that book documented. Put all my stuff in the book. I told Irving about his photos. Even when you post them online, man, put, put your shit on it because there's, there's, there's pirates out here. The pirates are on, they're on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're taking, you know, it's just like Pete Nice just did, we did Pete Nice and Pilot. We just put together the 50th anniversary book of flyers, mm -hmm. 220 something pages. I got a Rapid Mania 50th anniversary magazine that's going to come out in August. Magazine. But the whole thing I'm trying to say is content. It's important. If you had an event, you take a picture, that's your photo. In your phone. Urban, we think Urban walking on this camera for no reason. We walk around this camera for a reason. He up four in the morning taking pictures of homeless people, feeding the people. He could do a whole homeless book of New York City. Mm-hmm. And it's bringing awareness, man. Because when these homeless people is in there at TD Banks and stuff, the next two days, guess what? TD Bank is cleaned out. They got security and everything. So there are changes being made, you know. But, again, it's rampant out there in the city. And I just bring awareness to that, to the public. You know what's so funny? I talk to Chuck D a lot. He has this record label called Spit Slam Records. He didn't want to put out. Stetson the Sonic, Donald Dean and Records on his label. He dropped a lot of public enemy stuff through Split Slam. Split, Split Slam Records. Which he puts out on the platforms. iTunes and all this stuff where the artists can get paid. Mm -hmm. but you got artists, yo, I'm going to get an advance. An advance to what? How hard is it for you to go record your music Get all this, whatever on the platform to put your music up. Either if you sold 10,000 copies, that's more than what you, that's a start. But I tell a lot of these old school pioneers and legends, yo, man, get real graphic artists. Y'all be making these flyers that look like they're from 1972 and shit. The graphics suck. But they get mad when you tell them the truth. If you tell me the truth, I can't get mad. How can I hope you not look like 1932? Bonnie Chambers, um, text me so I could do that interview for you next week. But I'm just trying to say, in, in, in spirits of uh, of Yankee Stadium, it rock the bells. Uh, I'm coming up June 21st with MC Shan. Uh, we got the Pastor Michael DJ Cassie Radio City Music Hall. Uh, we're urban. yeah, yeah, 50 MCs, yeah. What time? I'm flying in on the 21st. It's Friday night. So it's the twenty third, that Friday night. It's the twenty, the twenty first, July. July. Oh, July. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant June. No, I'm gonna, no, 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 I'll no. see you in a couple weeks. No, that's Chucky. Chuck. But <laughs> Chuck. well, what I'm trying to yeah, say. Yeah, but is, I go to Radio City. Yeah, what I'm trying to say is, if you look at who's doing passing mic, and no, DJ Cassie, he's white. Nothing against white people. Both my brother in laws are white, Caucasian. But the point is, who's black? That will say, hey, you know what? Let me go and get all these people. Now, there's a young guy named Mark Anthony or whatever his name is that's trying to do something in September. Uh, I, I hit him up. But I'm just trying to say, besides Charlie Mack doing a joint in Philly, LL Rock the Bells, Yankee Stadium, Yankees. What are we doing? You know why we lose? Every time you go to the park gym, it's the same shit. Let's dance, let's dance, let's dance. <laughs> Who get tired of that shit? All day long. Then 
in in his dick. Then, then, and. It's like, come on, man. You walk out and do, be like this. Shit. Catch a stroke. And then you get the guys to get on the microphone and do some new shit. Mm -hmm. What is this? Listen, it's the art form of the culture, but every DJ ain't got to do it. Oh, he can still cut fast 45 years later. No, he ain't really that fast that y'all got slow. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it is 854. I don't even know the score of the game. Yes. I can say y'all can say uh shout out to anybody before we leave here. I will post I'd like to tonight. I'd like to shout out you because I do enjoy all your uh posts and on YouTube and on Spotify and on what was the other one? Rumble. 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 No. Rumble.com. Right. And you know so great. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you know, but I do go and follow well, and stuff you. all the time. I see you. Trust me, I see you. Trust me, I see you. It's it's you know it's funny because I gotta make I gotta do the audio. Then I pull the photo. Like I pull the pictures. Like when I finish with this, I gotta download this. Now I gotta go and whatever I'm talking about. Find the pictures to throw in there. Put our name up. Who's on this one here? And now now I'm gonna put this on to um, Hip Hop Guards from next week. I'm Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Okay. So this will be my next show on Hip Hop Guards talking about this here. But um, I like for y'all to tell people your social media platform and anybody you want to shout out before we get get out of here. Well, I keep it simple, man. You know they can contact me at Irv Panton on Facebook, Instagram, Irvin Panton, Hip Hop Photographer. I'm there. And uh, by the way, I'm gonna catch up with your boy uh, Jay Quan. He's in town tonight, so Jay we're gonna link up. up. Definite, definite. I think they're here for that uh, wild style big thing. Oh, 40th anniversary thing, yeah. Yeah, so mm -hmm. definite. Well, it's Don't good you seeing you. Sure will. It's good seeing you, Ms. Good seeing you. And uh, You too. I hope, I hope you can come June 24th to Springfield Park for the Springfield Park 80s reunion. Park Jam, beginning to celebrate. I'm the there. Yeah. The anniversary well, of hip hop. Me and Chuck talked about it. He has the right to call it that. He's been doing it for six years. I'm there. It's yeah. like he's just coming out of the woodwork and went, oh, I'm just going to do the 50th anniversary to get people out. He's been, he been doing his joint for six years. He's yep. a and I'm the one who stuck Park Jam on it. So he liked it, you know, because we text and stuff. Hey, and I, was, I can't wait to see year, everybody. And I'm coming up Yes, you were. Yep. It'll be great. And I, I can't wait to see you guys. Um, it's from noon until eight, it's a free event for the community and anybody that wants to come. There'll be vendors out there. There'll be artists. Shout out to my artist, Sedan, the God of Sound, tell Sedan, I who you met up. last year. I will tell him. Yep, he's getting ready. Um, I've got some new swag for him and stuff. So, mm. but I can't wait. I can't wait. This is my. And my birthday is June nineteenth, Juneteenth. So I'm celebrating that week. <laughs> wow. Well, I like to say to everybody, it's time to go. Um, like I said, I'm on Instagram at rappermania underscore Van Silk. If you go on Rumble, Spotify, or YouTube, just go not in my house with Van Silk, and I'm there. And make sure to check out MC Shan. Chronicles, which is part of the Not In My House with Van Silk's brand. Sparky D, when she needs to do some more videos, Hip Hop Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yep. And my girl, Sparky D, Claudia, happy belated birthday. And my girl, Claudia Jordan, who caused a frenzy uh -huh. in the sports world by saying that John Morant gun could have been a toy gun that everybody is talking about. And she's also on, on uh, that's my homie, Claudia Jordan. She's on also not in my house with Van Silk underneath the umbrella with the Claudia, life with Claudia Jordan. And hopefully she get the job at the Breakfast Club. Hopefully. So, she, came, she was in okay. her And hopefully she get the job at the Breakfast Club. She did host the 48th anniversary for me at SOBs with Shy Rock and uh, Child Wallace and original Spinderella. She was there. Spinderella, yeah. Nice. And it was so funny, again, when I talk about our people in hip hop, I think my bar guarantee was 
five thousand dollars or three thousand that day. Wow. And out of all the people that was at that event, you know, did you go to that one, Irvin? I, I oh, didn't. A, I missed it. With Melbourne Moore that. and Laser Sky, a Black Ivy in full force. I had. Okay. Right. So I, had a, I think my bar guarantee was five thousand. Mm. Out of all the people in there, she said, "Man, my two friends spent four thousand. So that I mean everybody was in there spent a thousand. Mm. My two friends have bought bottles in the VIP. I had some up. They spent about four thousand. Three or four thousand, whatever. What they they did ninety nine percent of the bar guarantee. It wasn't for them out of the food. Everybody walking around with a cup all night. <laughs> it wasn't even Henny no more. It was Henny water. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. But Van, regards to the family, man. Good seeing you. You looking good out there? We'll catch up. I'm trying. And everybody, peace out. I'm gonna go and see what my Miami Heat doing. I'm glad nobody posted the score. Right. All right. See you guys in two weeks. Definitely. Peace. Peace, brother. Love you.